Village in Motion. I'm Clint Lambert, the host today, June the 6th. It's Monday morning, and we have a what I consider a really educational kind of a morning this morning. We have Pastoral Ministries as our first guest with the director of, of uh, <clears throat> you know, I just really mess that up. Our first guest is not Pastoral Ministries. Our first guest is Dining Services Director, Eli Ayube. Glad to have you this morning, Eli. Good morning, Dr. Lambert. Uh, you come on at least once a month. Yes. And every time that you come, you always bring some, something refreshing, something new. And I understand there's some new things going on this morning in dining services. We have a few things that are new this morning. Uh, first, thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it seems like dining services always have something happening. Yes. A uh, couple of great things happened actually this past month. One of them actually, uh, congratulations to Corey. Corey yes. Young, the general manager at Fireside, was promoted to the assistant director of dining services. So you've got a right hand man. I got a right hand man. And, and what's he going to do? Corey will be uh, concentrating more on operation and also uh, working with him to get him ready for the director positions. Oh, wonderful. So uh, we're working on the developing plans and uh, uh, working on finances, budgets, operations, everything. Wonderful. And when you're out, he can just step right in? When I'm out, Cody can step right in. Cody actually is very well talented. He is, uh, uh, Cody is so committed to Green Spring, and this is one of the things that I've really enjoyed about Cody. He's really talented and uh, full of energy. Yes and uh, his relationship with the residents it's outstanding so i'm looking to take all that put together and trying to make something big out of corey right. and you know with his assistance and his knowledge it's gonna help to continue moving forward with improving services and quality and all that stuff we do right what's that going to do to woodland skies because here you're taking the the leader out of woodland skies and and you get getting it Yes, I'm taking Corey away from Woodland Skies, but Corey's still here at Green Spring. Okay. Uh, and as he's concentrating on operational, Corey will be still overseeing Woodland Skies. Oh. But now he'll be overseeing Fireside, the cafe, the Jefferson, and, you know, helping me with the overall operation. Mm -hmm. Woodland Skies has a very strong, stable leadership. From G's leadership, mm -hmm to uh, Chef Mark Dewey's leadership in the kitchen. You're not, it's, it's gonna be a very smooth transition. You're not gonna see a, uh, a hiccup in any way. Great. Um, what we're looking for right now is a uh, general manager for Woodlands. Mm. We have some very strong internal candidates that we're talking to. Well, okay. If uh, that happens, then uh, definitely we'll be needing another manager to assist the uh, new general managers. And you know, with, like I told you, with the structure, it's usually a general manager and assistant manager and a supervisor. Mm -hmm. So we'll have enough supervision to um, monitor and oversee fire, uh, Woodland Skies. Oh, very good. Let's run back through the fact of the management setup. You've got you've got a general manager that's overall for each restaurant. Each right? restaurant, and each uh, general manager will have an executive chef, okay, an assistant manager. Okay. Executive chef will oversee the back of the house operation, mm -hmm. the kitchen operation, and purchases and food. The front of the house assistant manager will oversee all the wait staff training, scheduling, so uh, residents relation, uh, wait staff training, takeout service, and all that good stuff. Okay. And then each uh, the system manager will have a supervisor to assist. Then the chef will have a sous chef, oh. and then a uh, lead cook. And this is how it drills down to the line staff, and then the utilities and all that. Okay. The sous chef is second in command in the kitchen. In the kitchen, correct. And does a lot of the cooking. They do a lot of the cooking, a lot of the ma mentoring and trainings, and. Uh, as we're always looking to enhance the plate presentation and the quality of the plate. Okay. So it's a combination work with the, and the, the chef and executive, the sous chef and executive chef working together. Oh, okay. So, you know, looking to say, okay, you know what, this piece of meat, you know, maybe we need to do something different with it or did not, does not fit well with our plate. Mm -hmm. 
look at different uh, product, what can we bring to the menus, the different specials we do on a weekly basis, how can we enhance the menus better. So that happens between the sous chef and executive chef, and of course the general manager will be staying on that conversation. Right. And then the assistant manager and the supervisor will be working on uh, wait staff trainings and uh, residence relation, uh, common cards, mm -hmm. anything that happens in front of the house. All right, great. In the front of the house right now, Woodlands guys, I mean, in fact, all the restaurants, um, are going to be losing people. The summer has arrived, graduation has arrived. Uh, how are we doing in regards to replacement? We are doing actually a lot better than I anticipated. We have 30 some servers coming in out to Fireside. Uh, Woodland uh, have a few coming in. Uh, luckily, we have quite a few of that servers are staying with us. Oh, great. And yes, we need a few more people. And then down at Jefferson, we'll still continue. We need a few more staff. Okay. Uh, our human resource department are working really hard on trying to bring us a few more staff members. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to lie to you. You have at least 40 new staff members coming in. Mm. They're going to require a lot of training. Yes. So bringing a 15, 16 years <laughs> old, trying to train them and you know, get them to be wait staff ready is going to take time. <laughs> so if you see a little hiccup in service, just be patient. We're working on these new guys. Okay. It, it, it will get there. I mean, they're, uh, like you, you, I mean, our residents knows we have, we always bring in such a good group of students and we work well with them. Our res I mean, our residents adopt them as, like, uh, adopt them as the, their, uh, their own children. Uh, it's a 30 day transition. I think we'll do okay. 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 We, we're going to hold you to that. Yes. Hold <laughs> me to that. Yeah. One other thing in regards to things changing. Uh, it used to be that we had theme nights periodically. Uh, we're going to get those back? We are getting them back at Fireside. Oh, okay. Uh, we're hoping to start at least once a month or twice a month or once a month to come up with a different fun event at Fireside, mm -hmm. themed dinners or uh, a celebration of something. Oh, okay. uh, we just started with the brunch yesterday, first day. Oh, how'd it go? A great hit. 300 plus people came in. Wonderful. That was, that was outstanding. Uh, that gave us an idea as how the themes should be spread with these different stations mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully soon we'll start with the different uh, theme dinners. Okay. With Buffet, with, with uh, Guestry starting at Fireside, <clears throat> do you need to make reservations or do you just walk up? I always encourage our residents to make reservations. Okay. That will give us a or anticipated the right number of people coming in so this way we have the right amount of food to prepare and also will reduce the uh, uh, the long wait at the host stand just okay. give you an example if 150 people comes in at the same time they all lined up by the host stand between 12 and 12 30 there is no way we're going to be able to bring in 150 people at the same time right we, you know, we usually take anything between 40 to 45 people every 15 to 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So 150 people is going to take over an hour. Yeah. The reservation helps us to let the residents know, you want to come at 12 o'clock? Yes, I understand. But do you think we can push it to 12.15 or 12.30 mm -hmm. or maybe quarter of 12? Right. And able, enable us to spread a smaller group of people at, uh, at a time. Okay. You don't want to make a reservation. You still want to walk in. That's fine. But you won't have to wait. We, you know, we're not going to tell residents, no, we're not going to serve you. Right. But I cannot promise you I'm going to be able to get you in immediately. Mm. Okay. Reservation, usually waiting time, five, ten minutes max, right. the table is ready. Yes. So we do encourage our residents to make reservation. It helps the service, helps the operation, it helps the... Uh, if I give the kitchen 50 orders every 15 minutes, mm -hmm. it will be a lot smoother to put all these orders out, cooking them to orders, right. than to giving them 150 orders at the same time. <laughs> yeah. You get Remember, <laughs> we're, we're restaurant style right now. Right. We are cooking everything to orders. And it's coming to a point that we are customizing a lot of different entrees. Mm. Uh, just give you an example. I have a resident that comes in and, you know, I don't want the fried catfish. I can, you know, I'm gluten free. Uh, I have gluten allergies. Mm. Can you broil it? Yes. Mm. So we're taking that piece of fish 
and now we're oh. taking it from bread uh, from it, corn yeah. uh, cornbread uh, crust to just a plain lot of marinade and able to either grill it or broil it so when, when you have a lot of these customers mm -hmm. uh, customizing in these different menus that takes time yes yes <laughs> I mean, you even got a fireside. I have friends who come and say, can you make me gluten-free crab cakes? Right. And we made it for them. Oh, wow. You know, we use rice, uh, rice bread instead of yeah. the regular bread to make the crab cakes. We've made it for them. You right. know, when it comes to a point that we're customizing a lot of these menu items based on that resident's uh, diets and needs, it's going to take time. Yeah. So 50 orders every 15, 20 minutes keeps everything smooth. It's the same number of people rather serving 200 people within 10 uh, within half an hour we're serving 250 people within two hours mm -hmm. all right yeah progress right progress <laughs> the second progress we're making that i want to mention to our residents is the cafe ah please bear with us it is good things that we have changed uh we're still tweaking it uh, we just made a couple more adjustments this morning. Mm. I've had residents asking me for sandwiches at night. And again, as I explained, the cafe was a cafe. We turned it to full size, uh, full service restaurant. Right. Uh, limited amount of equipment back there. It's hard to do hot entrees and sandwiches at the same time. But we're looking to incorporate a couple of sandwiches back to the menu. Oh, good. And good. that's bringing the steak and cheese back to the menu the chicken uh, salad and the hamburgers, either the black bean or regular burgers. Mm -hmm. So those four sandwiches will be available in the evening, additional to the, um, to the other hot entrees and the buffet and the themes that we do. Uh, the salad bar is gonna continue to be attendant by staff members, and also we'll be making all these uh, different salad entrees. Um, sorry. I am not bringing back novelty ice creams. <laughs> we are going to dip like every other restaurant. It wouldn't be fair to serve novelty ice creams at the cafe mm. while we're dipping at other restaurants. Right. Right. So it will be the exact same ice creams. Uh, I just want to clarify a couple of things to our residents. When we've made change to the ice creams, mm. we've made change only to the flavored ice creams. We've only purchased flavored ice creams from uh, Hershey's. And that's the, uh, the moose tracks and the peach yogurt and whatever other flavored. The basic flavor, chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, butter pecan, those have always came from Cisco and they continue to come from Cisco. We're not making changes to those. The only change, and it's the exact same product, same tasting products, are the uh, specialty flavored ice creams. All right. Signage in the cafe, we're still working on it as well. Okay. Hopefully this week you're gonna see it a bit easier. I think we'll give it a couple more weeks. It's just gonna settle in. The signage will be there. The menus are settled. What we do is we'll be, we'll be there. And just, just again, be aware. 100 seat cafe serving 400 plus residents every single night the cafe serves no less than 600 some people every single day between the staff and residents and this is between 11 30 in the morning and six o'clock in the evening and that's only 100 seats restaurant so let's bear with us please it's gonna happen we've made great changes and great improvement on woodland and the jefferson fireside have improved and has continued to improve we're working with our wait staff and the service the leadership in the kitchen has gotten a lot better we are getting there all right well get good leaders okay keep our thumbs up yes and we're, we're going to support you in regards to thank you i okay. just need i need the resident support and as i, I always um, preach from day one I cannot do it by myself. I need the residents on my side. I need your support. I need us to communicate more. If you have any comment, any suggestions, give me a call, email me, come to my office. Let's have a conversation. Sounds good. We're always, we're, we're always gonna be able to meet halfway. And again, I'm working for the residents. Yes. We'll make it happen. Sounds good. Dr. Elon, Lambert. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, sir. Good information. I'm we glad. Look, we look forward to the ice cream staying the same, except for the flavored uh, in regards to it. We look forward to the cafe getting back to being a cafe rather than a dining room. Thank you. Uh, and uh, look forward to, to Corey uh, being I'm, I'm excited. I, I need that right-hand person, and I truly see it in Corey. Great. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for coming on. Thank you, sir.
Uh, don't go away, folks. We've got uh, a roll-in. Uh, it's called Hooray for Hollywood. And we'll be back after that with Pastoral Ministries. very subtle, but continental, because it does what you want it to do. It has a passion, the continental, an invitation to moonlight and romance. It's quite the fashion, the continental, because you tell all your love while you dance. Clint Lambert uh, and it's Village in Motion this morning on June the 6th. And at this time, we have pastoral ministries. And we have especially the pastoral ministries manager, uh, Lois Kraft. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning, Lois. Good, <laughs> Good to, to see, see you. you. <laughs> and you brought somebody with you as a pastoral associate, right? I did. And <laughs> please go ahead and introduce her if you would, please. Sure. Uh, this is Jeannie Hennepin. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have met oh, her in the community, yeah. so but I thought it would be worth uh, having her come back, and uh, she'll be Great. sharing a, a little bit more about how it's been for her since she's been back. Um, we also have, before we do that, we have some updates that mm. we'd like to talk about. Please, please. Um, in terms of, and, and a lot of this, um, most residents should have received this in their cubby stuffers, mm, but I okay. think it's certainly worth uh, worth repeating. Yes. And um, wanted to bring to your attention, and, and some of these things are things for Green that Green Springs Fellowship is sponsoring. So Jeannie can certainly uh, mm -hmm. actually chime in on these. Um, but we're going to go in order here. So um, we are having, we're pleased to have the monthly faith, grief, and loss mm. sessions. Um, this is something that we started up. Uh, again last November mm -hmm. and um, have continued those um, beginning this year in, in April um, and just are really happy to be able to bring that to the community um, from a faith perspective of course faith grief and loss so mm -hmm. encourage residents to come and share in that experience uh, we want to be as much of a support as we can and we'll have different people from pastoral ministry yeah. sponsoring those and folks if you have, have your TV on uh, the information's on your TV right now Very 
very good. Um, so <laughs> go ahead and get that plug in. Regards Absolutely. To it. <laughs> understood. <laughs> understood. Um, and then let's see on Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, June 8th, uh, Green Spring Fellowship is sponsoring the movie Many Beautiful Things at 7 o'clock mm -hmm. in the Village Square Theater. Did okay. you want to say anything about yeah. that, Jean? Well, I'm so excited about being able to bring this. Um, it's a docudrama, really, and it, mm -hmm. it's going to last for about 17 minutes, so it's not mm -hmm. a long program, but it's very, very well done. Mm -hmm. And uh, the producer is local, um, but she was able to get Michelle Dockery from the Downton Abbey fame to do <laughs> the voice of the the main character mm -hmm. and it's a story of Lilius Trotter who um, could have been a very famous um, artist um, had been discovered by John Ruskin back mm -hmm. in the Victorian era mm -hmm. but instead she chose to go off to Algiers mm -hmm. and spend 40 years there mm -hmm. um, ministering and, and just building relationships with the Muslim people mm -hmm. and um, she continued to do her art but certainly didn't uh, become famous for it oh, um, mm -hmm. but it's a it's a precious story and I'm, I know you'll love it so right. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> excellent and then you have something else on Sunday June 12th yes. okay. Sunday June 12th there's a piano recital that's taking place in the chapel and um, the teacher is somebody who has come and been part of our worship team for Green Spring Fellowship oh, so we're pleased to be able to to have her kids come and and they would love to share with the community. Right, so. right. Excellent. So. And then last year, uh, for the first time, we had uh, an event that our chaplain, uh, Reverend Annie Smith, mm -hmm. uh, helped to put together with some programming staff and also pastoral ministries, and they called it Garden Ridge Goes to the Chapel. Oh. And so we are pleased that uh, we are having the second annual Garden Ridge Goes to the Chapel event, and um, and certainly um, we look forward to, um, to residents of Garden Ridge being able to come over to the right. chapel and join uh, join their friends for an, another worship experience. But that event will be Wednesday, June 29th okay. at 1030 in the chapel. So Wednesday, June 29th at 1030 in the chapel. Green Spring goes, I'm sorry, Green Spring, Garden Ridge goes to the chapel. Okay. Um, and certainly hope that people are able to come out and support that. Um, in addition, uh, we have a, uh, a group that's been in existence for a few months, uh, Orthodox Christians at Green Spring, and they meet on the first Monday, mm -hmm. which is today, yeah. the first Monday um, of every month at one o'clock in the Hunters Crossing uh, coffee area. So for those uh, residents who would like to join them, we invite sure. them to come today at one. And then another new faith group, um, and, and I love this because that's it just means we're growing, we're, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we have a, a new group, Lutherans at Green Spring, and they are having some preliminary events, kind of, you know, kind of kickoffs, uh, kickoffs to their new uh, worship experiences. But they will meet, uh, have a meet and greet in July and in August. And this information was also included on in the Cubby stuffers mm -hmm. that went out. Uh, but July and August, the second Wednesday at 1:30, okay. and then their worship experience, their first worship experience in the chapel, will be held uh, the second Wednesday in September. At at two o'clock, um, so they'll but they'll have a little fellowship beforehand mm -hmm. and have the, their worship service. So we're excited about both yeah, of these sure. groups and everything that's going on in the life of this of, of our community. Um, that's good. It's always really nice, and then we have a special trip, and this is the the last uh, the ma last main event that I'll mention. Uh, it's um, a collaborative effort between special trips with uh, with Robin Legrand and Pastoral Ministries, and it is a Lancaster show trip in Dutch <coughs> country. So uh, residents will be able to uh, take motor coach, and they'll go to Sight and Sound to see Sight and Sound to see Samson. I just realized I have all these S's. They'll go to Sight and Sound to see Samson. And then there'll also be a cruise um, uh, seeing Philadelphia oh. if that's a part of that package. So yeah. I think it'll be a really good trip uh, for yeah. residents, an overnight one. Um, so that's August 23rd and 24th, but the registration deadline mm -hmm. is coming up, and that is June 16th. So yeah. we encourage all those uh, residents <laughs> who would like to go and see Samson uh, yeah. and like to go on the boat cruise uh, for Philadelphia. Jeannie <laughs> says she's going yeah. um, to call Rob. 
Robin and um, get registered, re reserve your space for that trip. Wonderful. So, um, and then just a couple more things we have coming up in July, uh, Tea Time with Dr. Sarah McHugh. Oh. There'll be um, more information okay. coming Sorry. about that. She was our guest speaker during our spirituality and art series. Uh, yes. um, just a phenomenal woman, and we're bringing her back so that uh, we can have some sharing stories in July. And then in August, we have an event, a collaborative event with the Interfaith Council, hmm. um, Church and State. Yeah. And that's going to, I think that'll be a really good event um, in August. So yeah. lots of good stuff going I, on. Yeah, <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> wonderful stuff, but I wanted to switch gears so that uh, we could have Jeannie share with us mm -hmm. um, on what it's been like for her being back at Greenspring. Uh, I, well, if you would, please. Okay. <laughs> well, it was almost a year ago that my husband and I were packing up and uh, getting ready to leave Tucson, Arizona mm -hmm. after spending two years there. and. Uh, coming back and I had on the 22nd of June, I had an interview with the um, uh, transition team oh. for Greenspring Fellowship and then began here um, the 1st of August. Mm -hmm. So, and then in February switched to uh, back to um, the status of being an Erickson employee, and that's something that really felt like coming home Great. to me because I'd been an Erickson employee <laughs> before from 2001 to, to 2006. Mm -hmm. And so coming back on staff and particularly under the umbrella of uh, pastoral ministries mm -hmm. has been just a really wonderful Tremendous. transition. So. Oh, to interrupt you, are you a, a pastor? Are you ordained? I am commissioned, okay. so which is a little different than being ordained. And your commissioning service actually took it took place at Greenspring oh, yes. in the chapel. Yeah. So. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. So that was lovely. That was back in September. Yeah. So uh -huh. yeah. Tremendous. Very, yeah. very good. So but I, I love being part of this community. The, I love the ecumenical nature. It mm -hmm. certainly fits with the eclectic um, background I have had with a mobile career with my husband's uh, State Department um, work and um, and then one of the things that I really love about Greenspring Fellowship is that we have small groups and we do studies mm -hmm. and we're getting ready to start one in Esther, oh. the book of Esther, yeah. um, in a couple of weeks. And so um, we would love to have people join us for that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a great way to build community and provide pastoral care mm -hmm. as well as learn more about scripture. Mm -hmm. So Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. it, you know, as always, Minister Pastoral Ministries is just a growing, always thriving, new adventures, new new events. Um, it, it which is, going which on. is really, really nice. Yeah. Um, you know, my coming on board as Minister of Visitation with the Village Church and then moving into this role and having the opportunity to be part of such a, um, a closely knit mm -hmm. um, group of people who um, sincerely care. Um, about the work that, that we do um, and trying to, you know, bring a level of care, not just, um, you know, in terms of pastoral and spiritual care, um, but caring about the whole person. Yeah. Um, and I think that makes a big difference in terms of how we approach uh, ministry as a team. Uh -huh. um, so we're good. able to work really collaboratively and with Jeannie on board, you know, it's even, it's, it solidified us even more, I think, um, sure. and made it even easier <laughs> to do the work that we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have exactly one minute left. Okay. Um, anything special that you haven't shared already? I don't know. It, well, uh, just I, I agree with you in, in that uh, what you said about there's always something new happening mm -hmm. and growing. And I think the fact that it's a place of possibility, it's a place of hope, um, it's a, a place of caring. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's just a, a precious place Very to, good. to be able to minister. I really so. like that a, a, a place of possibility. That's great. Mm -hmm. I That's mean, great. you know, because mm -hmm. all kind of possibilities. Yeah. You know, and living here. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very, very nice. Very mm -hmm. nice. Well, very vibrant. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're very glad that the two of you came this oh, morning and well, shared thank you with so us, much. and look forward to seeing you around campus. Uh, continue to see you, you around campus. Uh, and if there's anything we can do, please. Let's know and let all the residents know. Okay. Thank the you. information uh, that Lois shared this morning is already posted on the bulletin boards. Yes. Uh, and I've seen some of 
on that way. Yeah, yeah. And everybody should have should have should have got a, <laughs> a cubby flyer in regards to it. So yes. uh, please support. Uh, let uh, your friends and your neighbors and your uh, table mates uh, know about all the good things that go on here at Green Spring. Okay. Again, thanks so too. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> Don't run away, folks. We have some announcements coming up.